Welcome to Sam Livecast, everyone. New week, new shows. Uh, these are potatoes that I've peeled. So I should say hello to everybody. I'll, I'll do that in a second. Potatoes that I've peeled, they're sitting in water so they don't turn brown. I've got boiling water right here. The potatoes are going, I'll, I'll explain after what I'm doing. But here's the deal. Um, when you cook something in a pot, like, like potatoes, like green beans, like whatever, they should be the same size so they all cook at the same time. Boys, you know that, right? Yep. I think we all remember the Brussels sprout incident of 2012. <laughs> that was your incident. <laughs> yes. Right. So I'm going to try and make these things relatively the same size. It doesn't have, they don't have to be perfect, but you do want them so when they go in the pot, they sort of cook around the same thing. And so have they just been soaking in there to get a little softer? Or no, what? they've only been, they only been in there because I peeled them and I don't want them to go brown. And oh. that's the one way to keep them from going brown. Got it. Uh, and Lynn and I, I said to Lynn, because he is a Master Chef contestant, mm -hmm. is it just water that does it? And he goes, I, I believe it's just water. Well, so even he wasn't sure. Turns out it is just water. It is just water. Did you look it, it up? Just, no, I didn't. But they've been in there for 15, 20 minutes or something. Okay, but before I do this, here, check this out. So come, Max. This always amazes me. And, and I, somebody smart will know the answer to this. This is boiling water, right? You can see that. Watch what happens when you put salt in. Ready? Ready. Boom. Whoa. Insanity, right? Isn't that weird? What is that? What is the chemical reaction that's happening right there? You can stay right there. I'm just going to put these in. Oh, God. Gosh. Ouch. I don't know like that there's hurt. a good way to do that. There, with strainer. Or like oh, with strainer. Tell your cameraman to back up. Tell your cameraman to back up. Okay, so these are all they're going to do. Ah, mother. They're going to sit in there about, <laughs> uh, about 15 minutes. They're going to be soft enough. Clearly, we're doing something with potatoes, right? Uh, okay, that's it. Uh, welcome to the show. Let's go sit down. We'll start. We'll have some fun. We got stuff to talk about. It's going to be a fun day. Let's go. You can just go straight to that chair. Oh, I can sit down right now and talk? You need a break. Well, I was expecting... We're that good. I was expecting there to be... Is this thing on? Hello, hello, hello? Is it on? Lynn! Yes. God, what happened to you? You got, you got to respond, man. I don't know if you're there if you don't say anything. Well, you know, in this whole fiasco, I have to get out of my chair jump into another chair, as I'll demonstrate right now. Don't make it sound more difficult <laughs> than it is. Hey, you just got to give me oh, a second. This, is, this okay. is totally unrehearsed, this Sam Livecast totally fiasco unrehearsed. that we get. Oh, all right. How you doing, dude? I'm good, man. How are you? Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Are we uh, following Sloppy Joe Week? Dude, Sloppy Joe Week was amazing. Loved it. Loved it. What was your favorite? Uh, I'd say the lamb was my favorite. You know, the picture that, uh, that went up, somebody on Facebook made some comment that it didn't look like a sloppy joe, it looked like a... But who says a sloppy joe has to be like bun on the bottom, bun on the top, that kind of thing? It doesn't. I don't think so. I think a sloppy joe can be anything you want. The only requisite is that it has to be sloppy. Oh, or don't yeah. call it a sloppy joe. And we definitely went sloppy, that's for sure. And that lamb coconut curry deal... That shit was sloppy and freaking delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. I also like, awesome. I'd say that was my favorite. I think next up was the, uh, the Ale Smith uh, Chipotle one. There's the lamb, by the way. Did. There's a lamb. You're right. It, somebody said it looked like a. It's pouring out. Like a, like a, like a pita pot pie or something. Yeah. Because <laughs> it does definitely look like, yeah, the, it does like kinda, the stuff in there. But yeah. those aren't carrots. That's red pepper that's in there. Yes. Well, let me read you this story. A gay former Marine currently working as a waitress at an Asian restaurant in Bridgewater, New Jersey, had the following experience. She went in. Uh, she um, received... Oh, wait. I lost myself here. Spoken out about the alleged horrific treatment she received from a young couple with two young children. Mm. Dana Morales, a server, uh, introduced herself to the family. Shocked by her short hair, the mother allegedly said, Oh, I thought you were going to say your name is Dan. You sure surprised us. What? Whatever. <laughs> but it got worse. After the family paid for their meal, Morales discovered they had allegedly left a note on the check, which read, Sorry, I cannot tip because I do not agree with your lifestyle and the way you live your life. What? 
Uh, do we need to say anything else? No. Is that all it said? Well, no, there's other stuff there. And, and how horrified uh, Dana Morales was. Never in a million years did I think this would happen, she said. I'm thoroughly offended, mad, pissed off, and hurt that this is what her kids will grow up learning. And that I served in the Marines to keep ignorant people like them free. So if that is such an issue for people like that, maybe they just should not go out because there's all kinds of people in this world. That behavior is disgusting. Where it's was disgusting. it? disgusting. It was in New Jersey, but it doesn't matter that it's Bridgewater, New Jersey. I think it can happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And I, I think um, I, I had read that article and I, I think unless I'm mistaken, the part you left out was the, the family stated something about God and Christianity in there, right? Ugh. No, I think that might have been another one, Lynn. Was it? Because I think, I, there, I think there was a couple of these that actually happened. See, that's horrific to me as like coming from a Christian. I think that 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 is in and of itself horrific. And, and see, and that's the thing to me that that's the thing Sorry. that I don't understand. I don't understand why we just saw that shot of a bull sitting by itself, but I don't understand. <laughs> it was artistic how, commentary by yeah, Max. Exactly. Does does d would not a loving God be okay with everyone? No, it has nothing to do with people. I mean, God is God. Who are we to but say? They, but they we... kind of, they use that as their shield. No, I understand that. But l let's say, let's just put it this way: like the people who have that kind of viewpoint, who believe in whatever, it doesn't have to be Christianity or God. Just if you have that viewpoint and you claim it's from something else, you know, I think you should get your facts straight first. And I think you're right. If 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 we're talking about like a religion, you know, you can, you use that as like the shield to say this is what I can say to you, right? And it doesn't reflect anything like what. <clears throat> I believe at least God is trying to say about loving people. So right. that's something that's, you know, horrifically offending to me. And it also, the fact that it makes national news is, is quite embarrassing, you know, oh. because that's not, well, you know what, here's the deal. It should make national news. It should. You're right. It really should. Because I think that kind of thing has to be pointed out. And I would suggest to somebody like that, that you just stay home because you know what? You, you, it was a gay female. You might run into a gay male. How horrifying could that be for your children to see? <laughs> and what if you ran into a black person? Or I'm a Jew. Might I be a problem also? God. I don't think so. And I'm not trying to say that I suffer the same injustices that homose homosexuals might or, or blacks might. Though I do have an argument with my friend Steve, who's half black. He says that they have had it worse in terms of persecution. And I go, no, I think the Jews have. I only need to point to the Holocaust. It's a fun argument that we have. The point is... Yeah, really it's fun. fun argument. It's a fun argument. <laughs> the, the what, what is so Steve, fun. Steve's half black and half white? A Jewish man and a black man it's, yelling at each other Steve, about who Steve, has it worse. Steve's mom is from uh, Ethiopia. Steve's dad is from Texas. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah. Right, so... so yeah. Anyway, the point is... Come on now. It's just... Uh, the Can't we all just effing get along? Everybody's allowed to have their own opinions, but is that the proper forum but if that's to your thing, express your views? Right, it's not. Now, I'm not going to tip you because I don't agree with, you know, what you do when you're in your off hours. Do you think people write, like, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm not going to tip you because I don't agree with you getting tattoos? Oh, that's a lifestyle you know choice. Or you can just even boil it down to, I'm not going to tip you because I don't agree with your face. Who, you know, know, like, who knows who, where that yeah. stuff comes it's just, from? It's just, it's, it's, right? Not, like, you know yeah. what? You were a little bit overweight and I don't agree with that. So I'm not going to tip you. Right. I mean, like, these, oh, well, what was that? That was that lady that was handing out those, those certificates at, at Halloween. Oh. <laughs> Instead of candy, she put a thing in the bag about, I don't know, kids being overweight and you shouldn't have candy and blah, blah, blah. Oh, God. I mean, come on. She could just hand out rice crackers like you. Hey, I don't hand out rice crackers because I think kids are fat. <laughs> I hand them out because I'm not a big fan of candy, and I think they need something a little different. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't do, like, uh, cha su bao. That would be a great thing to throw into their bag. <laughs> I'm well, talking those, about little barbecue pork buns. The, those aren't exactly Can cheap, we remind cool. people what I gave out on Halloween? Yes, yeah. there it is. Uh, Kim, my bookkeeper, was here the other day. We were talking about Halloween and blah, 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 and she goes, what would you give out? And I said, rice crackers, and she's like, what would you give out? I said, no, I gave out rice crackers. <laughs> she goes, seriously? I go, yeah. She was like in a little Ziploc bag. I go, no, nobody wants anything in a Ziploc bag. No, that's They're creepy. That's wrapped. creepy. That's scary. <laughs> yes, it is. It's scary bad. It's not a good thing. Yeah. Um, so I take uh, our dogs after they eat in the morning, Haley and Lucky. Ah, oh, they're over there. You can't see them. Mm -hmm. We go to the canyon out here. They go to the bathroom out in the canyon. 
We come back. We live in a cul-de-sac. Uh, Haley, as soon as we get back this morning, decides she's going to go on a neighbor's lawn. Go, like, go on the lawn. Like number two. Go. Number two. Yeah. You can show this picture. This is the lawn she decided to go on. Yes. Sorry, let me pull it back a little bit. Do you see anything there? Um, you know how hard it is to find a poop on a lawn that has leaves all over it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does this help? Nope. <laughs> nope. Still no. <laughs> nope. Doesn't help. You know how long it took me? It took me like 10 minutes till I found this. <laughs> oh, I think it's like it. right it's like, there, the offending little poop. It's like, where's Waldo? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it was <poop>. right. <laughs> It was the where's Waldo of poop. Unbelievable it's that she would somewhere. pull that up. Oh, my God. I'm like a whole freaking canyon. You got to go here, and then you got to go in the pile of leaves that I can't find the thing. What I found most interesting is you were looking for it, and then when you found it, you're like, I got to take a picture of oh, this. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always thinking of you guys. Of course. I find the Sam Livecast is kind of like the Instagram, <laughs> YouTube, and Twitter, <laughs> Flickr, whatever social media thing of your life. This is like, I got to share this, and we're going to talk about it on the show. Oh, it yeah. is a little bit. I like that. Yeah. Four young men who allegedly Instagrammed photos of themselves after purchasing $120 worth of fast food with a stolen credit card <laughs> now have another photo to post on Instagram. A mugshot. Oh, no because way. look what they look at the picture they put out. They're oh licensed. <laughs> no way. That's funny. <laughs> Stolen credit cards, all that food. You know Wait. what did they what did they say about dumb criminals? Wait, oh my how did? Gosh, that's so, so did dumb. that picture incriminate them? Yes, because I guess of the it did. Yes, of course. I guess it did because how... because well, their pictures have been blurred out here from the one. No, that I, I know, but about. I'm wondering how that connection was made. Well, I think because yeah, like the person reporting the stolen credit card. Let's, Somehow, let's, went on Instagram was like uh, I don't know. I, I'm going to guess that um, that 120 dollars in fast food, and I can't. Oh, Carl's Jr. You can see the you can see the stars on the bags, yeah. right? 120 dollars is a pretty big purchase, right? Yes. So when that particular uh, franchise found out maybe the next day that that card was stolen, it went viral. Yeah, it was easy. They've got pictures of these guys, video of these guys in the store. Okay, no, you know what I think it is? Okay, so here's what I think. I think that that picture, rather than being, like, the piece of evidence that incriminates them, <laughs> it was the piece of evidence that, like, sunk them. That proves that they were the ones that stole it and were the ones that did it. Mm. Yeah. Because, wow. the, because the person who owns this card yeah. would have had to randomly know. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's just nuts. It's nuts. And That's speaking nice. of fast food, while we're on it, we would all recognize this in an instant, right? Um, the, the McRib. McRib. Right. Beautiful McRib. Do you guys like it? Um, I, I mean, I like it in the same way I like Chef Boyardee. <laughs> I, I don't really like the taste, but, you know, it has some memories. When was the last time any, uh, any of you guys had a McRib? <sighs> last year. I don't know. Last I guess year last when, when they were last Yeah, like out. last year, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't remember. I'm not, I don't, I'm not a fan of McDonald's. I haven't eaten it in a long time. I'm not a fan of McDonald's. I mean, I like their fries. And I will say that the local McDonald's here had a Sam the Cooking Guy sandwich on the menu for a while. Really? And, yeah. No yeah. way. Grilled for, turkey, bacon, uh, provolone, something like that. For some reason. Because they have a, they have a, uh, it's a. Uh, oh, you're talking about the gourmet McDonald's. The one yes, that used yes, to have yes. like extra stuff in there. Yes. Like gelato and. Yeah, that's, and that's like, the yeah. one they have. I don't know why, but the most appetizing thing in this picture to me are the pickles and onions. I do like the pickles in That there. does actually make the McRib for those of us that actually enjoy the McRib. So stay on that shot. Have you seen this shot lately? Yes, I have Die. seen that shot. So I that's going around the internet. Presumably that's what a McRib looks like before it's been, you know, Wait, de no, defrosted. No, no, no. no. So why are you saying no? Because I don't want to believe it. <laughs> Is that for real? Did that oh, surprise well, you? That doesn't surprise me at all. It looks like a McRib. That's... Uh, it looks it like, looks that like looks a like completely drywall. frozen. That looks like drywall. That's why it's surprising to me. Why no? But you know, it's pork. Things. It's frozen pork. It's frozen pork. It's a. Is it pork? It's frozen mashed pork product a, or something, right? I don't know. Mashed into a. I'm just surprised at Lego. how taken aback <laughs> people. <laughs> to a Lego, yeah. What? That's why it's mashed into a Lego. Me? Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. It is meat frozen is going to look disgusting like that but that looks particularly bad dad you're going to you're going to say that doesn't i'm not saying it doesn't look bad okay 
And by the way, if you if you widen out a little bit, apparently it's our Canadian brethren that are making it because it's Buff puree, one hundred percent Canadian. Oh, yes. I see. Beer, buff Canadian. Uh, but the thing that surprises me is how blown away people are that that's the you know the beginning. That's how a McRib comes to life. Yeah. I mean, do you really think like they're cutting it makes me these things ask. off a cow in the back exactly, of the McDonald's? Yeah. It's freaking bone? McDonald's. Oh, Shit's gonna come in frozen, and it's gonna be ugly when it starts. And the burgers are gonna be ugly when they start. This just happens to be especially ugly, and I don't know why. Maybe they're flash frozen. Maybe that's the way. Maybe everything's flash frozen. No, it looks no exactly like how I would think it would look. People are, like, freaking out over this. It looks like drywall to me. <laughs> looks pretty bad, doesn't it? Yeah. I would like to be in that board meeting, though. We're going to make a McRib sandwich. Well, what about the bones? Oh, no, no. We're just going to make it look like it has bones. <laughs> <laughs> is that what this is supposed to be? And, and what is yeah, it? What, it why is. Is, yeah, why yeah. do they not just put it on the menu? Why does it come back like every every it, once yeah, a year? Yeah, why does it like, just live on the menu? You, you know why? It's like this pretend shortage of McRibs. Because, because McDonald's, are they're excellent marketers, and they know what works. Yeah. And but someone it, did a study. But, but don't you think they'd sell more of them? If it was available all the time? I don't think so. No, that's, a, I mean, that's what supply and demand is all about. They have obviously done mark, you know, market research that tells them that if they put this thing out, they'll, they'll get a better return for it. So yeah. why isn't the, uh, why isn't it like the Big Mac at like a, every eight month thing or something? Because the, the research on the Big Mac told them that they make more money if it's just constantly out there, whereas the McRib with these promotional things every year or two, I guess it just makes more sense to them. Who's doing this research? Maybe it's more difficult. These companies commission millions of dollars worth of, yeah, mark of, of, for, of trend research and forecasting. And stuff Speaking like of that. research, Maple Leaf Foods, mm -hmm. which sounds Canadian, right? Mm -hmm. It has to be Canadian. In a recent survey conducted by Maple Leaf Foods, they determined that 43% of the respondents, these are Canadian respondents, 43% mm -hmm. of the respondents said they would rather have bacon than what? Than Canadian bacon? 43% of the people said they would rather have bacon than sex. <laughs> what? Boys? Would you it, like to answer that? It's not even a food food. Uh, I, <laughs> I think it's <laughs> given the choice of going home tonight and having sex oh, God. or bacon. What would you choose? It's not about the rest of our lives. It's just about <laughs> no, tonight. Just tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Because then uh, it depends on what kind of please. food I'm in. I, I feel like it's all about the convenience factor because there is ready bacon. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, what are you <laughs> saying? <laughs> what are you saying? Sex, you have to do a whole bunch of work. And bacon <laughs> is just like easy. ready. <laughs> you can just sit there and have your bacon and watch. I don't even know how to comment on this. Orange is the I new know. black. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> By the way, are you watching Orange is the New Black? No, I'm not. I'm not. Oh. I, you guys talked about like you kind of had like a mixed feelings about it. i didn't have mixed feelings about it. max had max is expecting orange is the new black to be breaking bad or walking dead or or uh that what's that that gambling thing you like boardwalk empire boardwalk Wait, empire what, is that gambling i don't mean gambling. no i mean drinking okay. i didn't mean prohibition <laughs> thing yes and then uh and then what's the other one that you watch dex no, no the done. the motorcycle one oh, i don't Sons watch of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy. why do you keep you don't watch that on me i don't watch it no i don't know Everybody's, oh, you got to watch Sons of Anarchy. No, Game of Thrones. But I'm like, oh, you got to watch uh, Orange is New Black or Breaking Bad or Walking Dead. Mm. I don't know. I hope I'm not getting bored of Walking Dead. Are you? I hope wow. I'm not. There are like, moments... Just the fact that you're saying that says hey, a lot. I heard look, people look, say that. Just the that. fact that you're saying that says look, a lot. Look, here's the thing. I used to just sit and watch and be glued to it. Yeah. Now, in the middle, if Kelly would be like, she'd be upstairs because she won't watch it. She'd be like, honey. I'd be like, yeah, what? Stop the TV, I'd run upstairs. Yeah. But like, with Breaking Bad, you're like, shut up! Right, two months ago, I wouldn't even answer. I'd just no. be like... <laughs> even, you know, even Walking Dead a month ago that or two months ago, I'd be like... Hey, so I don't know what that you says. You have to be able to acknowledge when one of your shows is just has jumped. And for me, that's Homeland right now. It jumped for you? Yeah. Oh. 
No, except this show. You cannot ignore. They've gone like f- <laughs> uh, they've gone like five seasons straight, or f- sorry, yeah. five episodes straight in this new season without yeah. the main character. We don't have any idea what's going on. He's never even mentioned. Well, maybe it's that's like weird. McDonald's holding back the McRib. <laughs> is it keeping your interest up? <laughs> no, it's not. Are you it's are you me wanting off. to watch for sure so you it's, see him? It's bad storytelling. All right, it's I want It's not. I mean, unless it has some huge payoff down the line, but right now it seems like bad storytelling. I want a McRib right now. I know, well, right? you know what? You can't have a McRib, but you, you can have. One? But what's gonna? You can have what's gonna <laughs> come out of that pot behind me. Oh, well, let's do it. Are we ready? Let's do it. Let's hit it. Okay, we're getting ready to do this, but Perch, which is the old fixtures living is getting ready to open it. We're about a month and a little bit away. I think somewhere around the end of December. And I went to the store UTC the other day. Check this out. Quick little video. That's the front of the store. The window's blocking out what's going on. But I stole a quick peek by looking in through the lock construction hole. Look at that. Ooh. Cool, right? Look how big and amazing it's going to be. The fixed, the, uh, the, the perch now, which is obviously the old fixtures living, is about 20, I want to say about 25,000 square feet. Jeez, Jesus. that's huge. In, including <laughs> administrative offices and stuff like that. The new perch right there is about 25,000 square feet with no administrative offices. The administrative offices are down the street in another building. Wow. This place is going to be big, gorgeous, and fantastic. Kitchen, bath, outdoor. Unbelievable. I do my classes there. I can't wait to be there. Watch the live cast. Stay tuned to the Facebook. We're going to be doing some cool stuff there in that December and January. you got to check it out. Okay. Here we go. Let's do this. Okay, so we're making... Sorry, Lynn. Sorry. Oh, gosh. Gosh. Man. Clearly, we're making a potato thing. I'm making mashed potatoes. It's buttermilk week. I've got buttermilk in here that I used for something that Max and I shot for Bed Bath & Beyond the other day. Oh, yeah, oh. what was that? It was the donuts. Oh, yeah. Those little donuts. Oh, you made and donuts. I, nice. And I've got, the, I've got buttermilk, and I don't really use buttermilk for anything. So I'm in my fridge trying to think about what I could use this week. And I, I'm all in favor of using up things that you've got. So, Okay, so here's the potatoes and watch. The making mashed potato process is like this. Where'd my knife go? In this. Watch this, Max. Here's what people need to know. It takes about 15 minutes when they're all the even size, right? Then you can take your knife and you can go boop. See how easy it goes uh, in? Boop. You got to be able to poke it through, right? Anyone will do that. Boop. That's what you need. You need them at that point. But now we don't want them watery. So we're going to drain this. The potatoes will come out. Back on low heat, just for a second. <laughs> you okay there? Yeah, I'm good. I like to dry them out a little bit. Okay, they're going to sit in there. Here's what's going in here. We're going to put about a cup of buttermilk. It looks like that, right? Maybe a little bit more. And then, some butter. <laughs> About a half a stick of butter. And now these are gonna... What, what was that? You your that? stomach? I think that was my stomach, Oh my man. gosh, man. Can you believe that? It was growling a lot earlier when we were shooting. Okay. Butter, milk, and butter. We're gonna heat up right there. So for those that don't know what buttermilk is, yes, um, do you care to explain what it is? It's uh, milk that has a, um, how can I put this? Milk that's gone past or butter that's started to hit the sour stage. Sorry. These are done. That starts to hit the sour stage. It hasn't gone bad, but the, I don't know the right words, the enzymes or something in it have started to change. And, the, and the, the flavor of it is, gets a lot more sour. I'm probably doing a bad job at that. Do you have the technical? You probably got Wikipedia going in there. Oh, right? no. I was just saying. I, I remember at some point in time someone explained to me, and they said that it was essentially the water that used to be left over from churning butter. It's not that anymore, but that's right. how it kind of got started. So it has a little tang to it. I got it. It does, definitely has a tang. Okay. This is a potato ricer. Think giant garlic press. Right? And in the bottom, you can see there are these blades. This particular one has an adjustable. Oh, fancy. So if you do this, you have big holes, right? 
and then things come out big. You can give it one of those turns, and now things come out smaller. And if you go all the way, you get a whole bunch of little tiny holes, and that's what I want for the potatoes. That's pretty smart. It's a, it's a really good one, actually. So we're going to do this right here. So all you do is you fill this guy up with potatoes. This is a great thing, and this is going to help you make beautiful mashed potatoes. So ready, and then you watch. Do you see them come out? See how that happens? Yeah, a little potato rice. Right. Open it back up again, and look, inside, there's nothing. It's all used up. That's really cool. Where'd you get that? Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh. It's a really good one. I had a, an other one, another one from way back in the day that wasn't adjustable. You had to completely swap out the, the blades. These are going to make really good mashed potatoes. By the way, you can go to bedbathandbeyond.com forward slash holiday and take a look at the bunch of the stuff that I have up there. There's how to make three types of mashed potatoes, how to make a really delicious pan gravy, how to carve, that kind of stuff. How to brine. Yeah. Okay. Cam 2 does look awesome, by the way, Len. It does. We got it fixed, finally, for those who have been watching. Yeah, we had a problem with the camera. Okay, so watch. The problem was only for like two years, though. <laughs> <laughs> I need this butter to melt. I should have used soft butter. Which That's I a lot of steam coming out, sir. Which I didn't have. I know, I can see that. Okay, we're going to use as much of this as we need. And what this is going to do, I mean, you could just use warmed cream. You could use warm butter and milk. What the buttermilk is going to do is it's going to give it a really delicious flavor. For me, it's one of the favorite things I can do with buttermilk. You know, I can only count a handful of times where I've actually bought buttermilk. And I think, I don't know, I don't, I guess... I always thought it was just kind of leftover milk and you don't really use it for anything but biscuits or something. Well, it's really, I mean, it's all about flavor, right? Right. <laughs> biscuits, yes. Buttermilk pancakes are, are really kind of like unbelievable. They're, oh. ow, 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 shit. I didn't mean to get Baby. hot. It was hot mashed potatoes. <laughs> okay, so here's this, right? Look how, e I mean, it's really easy, right? There's <laughs> yeah. not a lot of work going on here. I, I'm sure you just sold me on a on the potato a, ricer. A potato ricer? I'm serious. I mean, I hope I sold everybody on one. And, and if you're going to buy one, I would buy the one that has the little adjustable thing in it because it's just way better. All right. This, chives. Oh, that's where the magic happens. I was going to go with, um, I was going to go with green onions, but I thought, mm. I always use green onions. So we're just going to put an ass load of chives in here. Nice flavor, beautiful color, right? What is that? Third of a cup? Something like that? I don't really know. And of course, salt and pepper. We haven't done that yet. You have to salt and pepper these things. You have to. And the other thing that I use, I always put some olive oil in. Salt. Look, Thanksgiving's coming up. You see how easy this is? I'm no expert. I mean, I'm okay at what I do, but it's not like you need to be an expert to do this. And then a couple of decent little glugs of the olive oil. And of course, I'm using wee olive. And why wouldn't I use wee olive? I mean, I love them, and their shit's amazing. It makes good holiday presents, by the way. Oh, yeah. I think I gave it to my sister a couple times already. Yep, that's a good call. So here you are. Okay, you want to add, uh, you know, blue cheese to this? Add some crumbled blue cheese. You want to add uh, some bacon? Add some bacon. Mashed potatoes right here. Here you go. That looks pretty so righteous, pain. man. There you go. It's beautiful. There you go. Eat that. Okay, Will. I'll take some right from here. And what's wrong with this? Let me tell you. Oh my god. Okay, there's nothing. Creamy. Mm. Smooth, delicious. It won't make a great picture. Lynn's going to take a picture of that. I don't know if it's going to be amazing <laughs> or anything, but I'm telling you. Buttermilk mashed potatoes. They give it a little 
like change up in, in the tang level of the whole thing, that's really welcome. All right, buttermilk week, off to a good start. Think about making these for uh, Thanksgiving. Oh yeah. Uh, Wednesday, I'm making a dressing and that's as far as I've gotten for the week so far. But come back, tell your friends, make this recipe, don't eat bad food, come back Wednesday, watch what we're making then, lots more fun stuff. It's the Sam Livecast. We love the fact that you hang out here with us. Don't we, boys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll see you Wednesday.